<laughs> hey again, everyone. What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me. This is episode 891 of Hockey on the Spot. I hope you all enjoyed your Halloween yesterday, and it's finally November. October's over. Um, it's November 1st, and to put no October to bed, we talk about the th only three games that happened last night, as well as the updates from yesterday. Uh, starting with a further update on the whole situation with Colorado Avalanche goaltender Simeon Varlamov. The attorney of Simeon Varlamov's accuser, his girlfriend Eve, Eve says that Varlamov spent all day drinking and allegedly <laughs> threw the woman into a wall and began to stomp on her in a drunken rage. He also added that this wasn't the first time that, 20, that the 25-year-old netminder has allegedly assaulted the woman and that this was the final breaking point as she nurtures her injuries in, ho in the hospital. The alleged victim of Varlamov's domestic violence also posted comments online saying, if a man raised his hand, he will do it again. Varlamov faces two to six plus years in prison if he is convicted of the assault and kidnapping charges. Um, and of course, if that does happen, will be a huge end to his career. Very disappointing end to his career and a huge loss for the Colorado Avalanches. He was doing so well. The Montreal Canadiens have signed defenseman Alexi Emelin to a four-year contract extension worth $16.4 million. Very smart to do now, despite the fact that he is hurt. Um, when, he when he's healthy, he's definitely the most valuable shutdown defenseman on their roster, and he makes such good plays with the puck, good puck mover. So very good to do now so that he doesn't go into unrestricted free agent. <laughs> see. On Monday, the 2013 Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks will visit the White House in Washington where U.S. President Barack Obama will pay tribute to the team in win. However, one member, Dave Boland, who happened to score the cup-winning goal, will not be attending. Leafs Bol forward Boland says, It's a nice gesture, but I'm not going to go. I hope the boys have fun. It's flattering, but I'm a Toronto Maple Leaf now. Besides... I've already been there once. <laughs> so, very interesting there. He just believes that his philosophy is that he is a Leaf and that that's what he wants to stay. Big, tra uh, very surprising trade yesterday. The Philadelphia Flyers have traded forward Max Talbot to the Colorado Avalanche for forward Steve Downey. I don't like this trade for the Avalanche. I think the Flyers have stolen this trade. Um, Max Talbot, he is a fourth-line center, a fourth-line player. Um, he's not the same player he was in Pittsburgh as he showed in Philadelphia. You know, a guy who scores big goals in big oper in big situations however, and is meant for being a defensive forward. So the Avs basically sacrifice scoring and grit for, for a guy who's really just seen his play go down. You know, it's kind. Of, it's a very weird kind of trade. And as far as the flyer go, Flyers go, Steve Downey, for Steve Downey, in a technical sense, this is his second stint with the Philadelphia Flyers. He's played a few games for them before. He started his career there. And he's really developed into one notorious player in the National Hockey League, a hard-working player, a hard-nosed player, um, and a guy not, you don't mess around with. You know, he's he's a... And he was playing on the top line for the Colorado Avalanche with Matt Duchesne and uh, Gabriel Landeskog, I believe, um, or P.A. Parento. Yeah, P.A. Parento. So um, this is really not a good trade as far as the Avalanche are concerned. One belief is that maybe it was just a trade made to take people's minds off the Varlamov situation. H however... Um, other people say that I, I don't know what this, maybe it's just a salary dump. I have no idea what this trade's all about, but I don't like it. I don't like what the, I don't like the, it for the avalanche. I let the Flyers, I think, got a steal here. Downey is enjoying a nice, healthy season. Um, more up news on the Varlamov situation. After spending one night in jail, Simeon Varlamov appeared in court. Um, yesterday morning, 
<laughs> to face charges of assault and kidnapping. The judge has set Barlamo's bond at $5,000 and giving him permission to travel while away awaiting his trial. The court has also <clears throat> issued him a restraining order from contacting the victim, his former girlfriend, Evie, or Eve, while Barlamov's lawyer <laughs> maintains the goalie's in innocence. According to the official police report, Barlamov had been drinking all night and <clears throat> began assaulting her by kicking her in the chest and knocking and knocked her down, <clears throat> then stomped on her while she was on the ground. <clears throat> he then grabbed her by the hair and dragged her out of her bedroom and held her face to the floor, stating that if this was Russia, I would beat you more. Once she stood up, he grabbed her by her arms and shook her and pushed her down again. The, record, the report goes on to say that this is the most minor of beatings she received. She's re received five in all, and the last one was was to unconsciousness. Please remember that Simeon Varlamov is considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Man, things are really get heating up with this Varlamov situation. Uh, and if this, I if this really is true, then he definitely deserves to be in jail for this. Um, and not just jail, prison even. Um, that's just an that is just not a good thing, and it's. I used to have a lot of respect for Simeon Varlamov, but once this is pr once he he is proven guilty, I will probably lose pretty much all respect I have I've had for him. Um. Anyway, moving on, the Carolina Hurricanes have signed forward Manny Malhotra to a one-year two-way contract worth six hundred thousand dollars. This is a very interesting signing. We all know Manny Malhotra and his ability. He's as a Face-off winning center and a sh and an excellent shutdown forward. Um, that's what he is. This is a guy who, for many years, we thought was his career was over. He had been such a valuable part of the Vancouver Canucks. That one year with the San Jose Sharks, he was also very good. Um, man, we all thought his career was over. But, man, he has come back real strong, and now the Hurricanes got themselves a shutdown center who wins a lot of faceoffs, and that's what they need right now. Malhotra could really bring that edge to their team um, as a third or fourth line center. <laughs> Whatever line he plays on, he's going to make it better. So, um, good move for the Hurricanes. If, if, of course, Malhotra is healthy, he hasn't played in a long time. I think it's been about a full year since he's played, but... Uh, hope, hope. I hope for the best for Manny in Carolina, and man, hope, hope he can come have a strong return for his career. The Colorado Avalanche have placed David Vandergulik on waivers. Um, not too much of an import, not that much of importance. Montreal Canadiens forward George Paris has shaved his famous mustache for Movember starting um, today in support of. The fight against prostate and t testicular cancer. Um, so, um, many people, for those of you who wish to be growing a stash, um, you guys can donate to George Paros's profile. <laughs> um, so, um, the Edmonton Oilers GM Craig McTavish is feeing the heat, but isn't going to jump on any bad trade. McTavish explains, I don't see how making a bad trade helps anybody. Are we trying to do something to shore up the deficient areas? Absolutely, but I'm not doing something at all costs. You have to put value on what you're going, you're getting, and what you're paying. We'll do whatever's reasonable to help this current group, but I won't make a trade because you run the risk of undoing your long-term objectives for a very myopic, very short-sighted gain. I understand the frustration, but at the same time, it's all about value. There's lots of deals out there where we can overpay. However, you never know what can happen. Excellent statement by the Oilers GM. <laughs> um, um, Simeon Varlamov, who posted Bond today, Bond uh, yesterday after facing charges in court will travel to Dallas for Friday's game against the Stars. 
Colorado has announced that they will not recall a goaltender from the American Hockey League. Um, <laughs> so that's lucky news for... That is very lucky news for him. Um, the Tampa Bay Lightning have recalled forward Brett Connolly, who was drafted 6th overall in 2010 from the American Hockey League Syracuse Crunch. Um, this is a guy who they have high expectations for. And last but certainly not least, the Phoenix Coyotes have recalled defenseman Brandon Gormley, who was drafted 13th overall in 2010 from the American Hockey League's Portland Pirates. And he is a defenseman who they have very high expectations for. Um, um, and that is it for all the updates for today. Now let us get to the three games from last night. Um, starting with the Anaheim Ducks and the Boston Bruins at the TD Bank North Garden. The Bruins making a couple of huge comebacks to win 3-2 to two in a shootout. The Ducks will get a point, get a point, but not, they do not get the win. Du uh, um, do not get the win, of course, just suffering the bad news that Tamu Solani will be out for two weeks. However, Dustin Penner re would return to the lineup for last night's action as he is symptom free from his concussion. But for the Ducks, they held a 1-0 and 2-1 lead in the game. The Bruins tied it up twice and then won in a shootout. For the Boston Bruins, their goals being scored by Carl Soderberg, his first NHL goal. Congratulations to him. Assisted by Chris Kelly, his first assist of the year. Yeah, his first assist of the year. And Ryan Spooner, his first NHL point. NHL assist and NHL point. Congratulations to him. So congrats to Carl Soderberg and Ryan Spooner on their accomplishments. And then late in the third period, on the power play, Zdeno Chara gets his second of the year, assisted by David Krejci and Tori Krug. Um, Chara had an unbelievable game against the Ducks last night. For the Anaheim Ducks, their goal's coming from Devontae smith Pelly, his first of the season, and his first in 14 NHL games, assisted by Matthew Perot and Dustin Penner. Dustin Penner getting involved in his first game back. And the second Anaheim goal being scored by Matthew Perot, his fifth of the year, assisted by Devontae smith Pelly and Cam Fowler. In the shootout, Jerome Aginla, the only player for either team who would score in the shootout. Boston would also go with the two youngsters, Ryan Spooner and Carl Soderberg. Ducks went with Nick Benino, Corey Perry, and Ryan Getzloff. Nightmare of a shootout for the Anaheim Ducks. Nick Benino would mishandle the puck and would mishandle the puck and lose it. Corey Perry would basically fan on his shot, make allowing for an easy save by Tuka Rask, and Ryan gets off with the only one who would actually get a shot off would hit the post. Um, so not a good night for the Anaheim Ducks as far as the shootout is concerned. <laughs> um, both teams had 23 shots on goal. Zdeno Chara led all players with six shots on goal. Um... Ben Lovejoy led all players on the ice with seven hits. Milan Lucic would lead the Bruins with five. Um, so, um, um, so that's the statistics there. Those are the statistics there. Two, both goaltenders would come up big. Both goaltenders who played Tuka Rask and Yo for the Boston Bruins and Jonas Hiller for the Anaheim Ducks. He would get the start. Both goaltenders would make 21 saves on 23 shots, both a 9-13 save percentage, respectively. But again, it would be Rask coming up with the victory. Congratulations, and getting becoming the game's first star. Zdeno Char was the second star, and Jerome McGinley was the third star. <laughs> Congratulations to the Boston Bruins. Next, we have the Buffalo Sabres and the New York Rangers. At Madison Square Garden, Rangers' second game of the year at the Garden after one road game against the Islanders. I was actually at this game. The New York Rangers coming up with their with a, their first win streak of the season. They've won two in a row, beating the Islanders and now the Sabres <laughs> by, by a final score of 2 to nothing. After getting a first look at Thomas Vanek in a New York Islanders sweater, they get their first look at Matt Molson in a Buffalo Sabres sweater. 
Molson had already made his Sabres debut against the Dallas Stars and had two goals. But again, for the New York Rangers, 2 to nothing victory. Um, they were on fire. For the New York Rangers, their goals being scored by Derek Brassard on the power play, his second of the year, assisted by Michael Delzato and J.T. Miller. That was J.T. Miller's first assist and point of the season. <laughs> And then the second Ranger goal would be scored by Chris Kreider, his second of the year and second in a row he scored in two straight games, assisted by Matt Zuccarello and Ryan McDonough. <laughs> For the Henrik Lundqvist would lead the way to, to a 29 save shutout. Um, he was the second star of the game. Chris Kreider was the third star. Matt Zuccarello was the first star for some odd reason. But for the Rangers, just a shooting gallery. Um, for, for the New York Rangers, 17 of the 18 players, that's forwards and defensemen, would get at least one shot on goal. Brandon Mashinter, the only Ranger who would not get a shot on goal. <laughs> Everyone else would, though, get at least one. Derek Dorsett had four. Chris Kreider led the Rangers with six, and he led the game as well. Now, actually, I take I take that back. That would be Derek Stepan. He had seven shots on goal. Matt Zuccarello had five. Benoit Pouliot had four. Stepan still looking for his first goal of the year. For the Buffalo Sabers, as far as the Buffalo Sabers were concerned, Brian Flynn would lead the team with four shots on goal. Um, Rasmus Ristolainen would lead the game with seven hits, however. Um, Ryan Miller, however, would be the real star for the Buffalo Sabres. And it's yet another one of those games that just proves that Ryan, that Ryan Miller's record doesn't really show how well he's played this season. Yes, he has a, now a 1-10-0 record as of last night. However, his statistics have been unbelievable. Again, his record stinks. And his goals against average is so bad, but that's only because of the team in front of him. His save percentage, however, is among the best in the league. In this game, 44 saves on 46 shots and 957 save percentage. See, he has been unbelievable this season. It's just that he gets no help in front of him. The defense is awful, and the full offense is even worse. So, Ryan Miller definitely cannot wait to get out of Buffalo at this point. <clears throat> so congratulations, though, to the New York Rangers on a humongous win. Again, I was at that game and got to meet Joe Micheletti, Kenny Albert, John Gionone, and Ron Duguay, which was very awesome. So congrats to the New York Rangers. And last but certainly not least, we have the Nashville Predators and the Phoenix Coyotes in Phoenix. The Yotes with a huge comeback win. We talk about the Bruins coming back over the Ducks. The Coyotes with an even bigger comeback against the Preds. The final score, 5-4 to four in a shootout. The Yotes trailed the game 3 to nothing. The Preds had a 3 nothing lead in the game, and then a 4-2 lead in the game. The Yotes came back to tie the game at 4, and then win in a shootout. Wow. <laughs> the goal that got started for the Yotes was the first NHL goal for Jordan Schwartz, who scored what? Could be considered more of a fluke goal, a weak shot that Carter Hutton should have stopped. Um, so first NHL goal for Jordan Schwartz, assisted by Zabinik McCulloch and Oliver Ekman Larson. And from there, that basically just translated. That basically be that goal ended up becoming infectious for the Coyotes. Derek Morris would follow it up with his fourth of the year, assisted by Keith Yandel and David Moss. Then, after Nashville seemed to be back in it, Shane Doan, the captain, would get back started again on the power play, assisted by Mike Ribeiro and Keith Yandel. And then Antoine Vermette's fourth of the year would tie the game at four. <laughs> Two minutes and one second later, assisted by Shane Doan and Kyle Chipchura. Uh, David Legwand, a goal and two assists in the game um, for the Preds. That led all players in points. Shane Doan, a goal and an assist for the Yotes. Two assists for Keith Yandel as well. Those are all the multi-point performers in general. 
Speaking of the Preds, let's talk about their goals. Again, they had a 3-0 on 4-2 lead in the game. For the Preds, their goals being scored by Matt Hendricks, his first goal of the season and first in a Nashville Predators sweater, the former Washington Capitol, assisted by David Legwand and Matthias Eckholm. Then Eric Nystrom would get his third of the year, assisted by Patrick Hornquist and David Legwan. And then David Legwan would score his second of the year on the power play, assisted by Seth Jones and Shea Weber. So Legwan, best player in the first period. And then the, the fourth goal for Nashville being scored by Paul Gostad, his second of the year, assisted by Nick Spalling. So a big night for David Legwan, despite the loss. Um, in the shootout, Michael Bodker, the only player for either team to convert in the shootout. He was the last player the Yotes would use. They also used Mike Ribeiro, Radim Verbata, Oliver ekman Larson, and David Runblad. The Preds would try with Craig Smith, Matt Cullen, Mike Fisher, Gabriel Bork, and David Legwand. All would miss. Um, Eric Nystrom led the game with five shots on goal. Again, um, and David Legwan led the game with three points, a goal and two assists. The Yotes, of course, had two assists from Keith Yandel and a goal and an assist from their captain, Shane Doan. Um, Shane Doan also led the Yotes with four shots on goal. Mike Fisher and Paul Gostad also had four shots on goal for the Preds. As far as hits are concerned, how about Eric Nystrom? In addition to leading the game with five shots on goal, he also led the game with eight hits. Matt Hendricks had five hits, as did Mike Fisher. <laughs> so a physical game is from a Predator standpoint. Derek Morris led the Oats with four hits. Sabina McCulloch, five block shots to lead the game in that respect. And as far as the goaltending is concerned, Thomas Grice would get the start in goal. For the Yotes, he played the entire game and made 36 saves on 40 shots, a 9.00 save percentage. So not the best night for him, but not really a great night for the goaltending in general. And for the Phoenix, for the National Predators, they went with Carter Hutton, who was even worse. 21 saves on 25 shots and 8.40 save percentage. So definitely the most interesting game of the night. Congratulations, though, to the Phoenix Coyotes. Jordan Schwartz would be the first star of the game, Shane Doan the second star, and Keith Yandel the third star. Congratulations to the Phoenix Coyotes. And last but not least, we now take you folks to this day in hockey history, our first moment from November, November 1st moment coming up here. In 1995, Mario Lemieux of the Pittsburgh Penguins scored a goal and added six assists in a 10-0 Pittsburgh Penguins win over the visiting Tampa Bay Lightning. This is not his record. Mario Lemieux scored two, two goals and added six assists on October 15, 1988 in a 9-2 victory over the St. Louis Blues. The overall NHL record... Holder is Daryl Sittler of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who scored six goals and added four assists on February 7, 1976, in a 10 or a 12, I believe a 12 to 4 victory over the Boston Bruins. So, what a great moment, Dolphs, but still a great moment for the career of Mario Lemieux, one of the most enjoyed, despite injury prone, one of the most enjoyed of the National Hockey League. And that is it, folks. That'll do it for episode 91 of Hockey on the Spot. Thank you for joining me again. This has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. I will see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you, and have a great day.